Yes, now we can start. So after now we make many German videos, uh, we have to go into English. You're very welcome to our YouTube channel. Um, this time we have another video for you. And today we are talking about organic compounds in aquarium, which is uh, a topic actually in some groups and uh, Facebook, whatever. What we see is there is a lot of information, a lot of misinformation also, and we want to try to explain you a little bit what is this key of organic compounds or whatever. There's really a very simple way for you at home to detect it without being necessary to buy a test or whatever. And the first thing you can always do is if you look into your aquarium, with your eyes. You take the lamps in a daylight modus, so not with blue, as best. You look into the aquarium or through the aquarium into a white wall. And if you have the feeling that the water looks yellow or yellowish or more greenish, a little bit brown, whatever, then it is quite sure that you have some organics into the water because seawater has to be crystal clear, as clear as possible. The second way how you can detect organic is if you use the bucket method. So you take some gallons of water in two white buckets. One is from the aquarium, the other one you use tap water. Due to the chlorinization of the tap water, there is no organic in the water usually. I know that some areas sometimes it's very bad tap water, but normally it's if you can smell the chlorine, then it's no no more organic in. And then you compare the color of these two. We call it bucket yellow test, which is very common in Europe since many, many years. Also that is a sign. So if the aquarium water is more yellow, this is a typical sign that you have organic compounds in. These organic compounds are mostly built from human acids, from flavo acids, and very kind of different molecules, long chemicals, which you get into the food, the poo of the fish, algae which go away or which dying. So they release all this organic stuff into the water. Some of them turn into long molecules with yellow color. This is that what we see with our eyes. One basic question, Claude, is organic bad for the aquarium or is organic useful sometimes? Oh, it depends. You cannot say it's always bad, it's always good. We have some good ones. If you have specific carbon sources which we use, for food for the corals, some vitamins are very useful for corals. They contain also a C atom, which means they are organic, uh, but they're good. So, but they don't make any colors. If we have a food which is colored, so when you put it in, you can see a lot of color, or it contains artificial coloration, or the fishes eat a lot of food and put it out, then we have these type of organic compounds. We have different words for it now. So at the moment, very common is a DOC test, DOC, Dissolved Organic Carbon, sometimes SAC, which means Spectral Absorption Coefficient on 254, which means in the wavelengths of the light, of UV light, which have the wavelengths 254, will be used. It will be put into photometric and it will be tested how much it is absorbed. Then we can calculate how much of organic we have into the tank. It's a really, really good method because it's really comparable to DOC test. It's cheap to get also over the ICP testing. You can get it from us. You don't need an extra test for it. You can absolutely compare it and use it for your aquarium. It's a perfect tool to test it. If you don't want to buy and test or use an ICP because it's no worse or tank is too clean, you don't want it, you can use that bucket test, eye test you can use for it. And you can use a very specific test which we developed 20 years ago. And that's the heating test. And the heating test means you have a phosphate test kit at home. You test the water one time as you do usually. You noted the result. Then you put a little bit of water out. You put it in a microwave shortly before it cooks. Let it cool down. Take the sample again. Do the test again. And then you have another value. And the factor between the two, that's the result we need. Because according to the factor, we can see if we have problems or not. It's a very interesting thing. We collected data uh, about all these years. So we have uh, several 10,000 tests which we've done. And we see exactly that over the factor of more than two, 
nearby to and over to the most tanks developing cyanobacteria and other things. Together with the ICP, the lack of some elements, we see that the processes doesn't work properly in an aquarium. It comes to a depot effect of phosphate, of long molecules, and that you can see on the heating test. So you cannot test organic in a laboratory ICP test? Yeah, you can. With ours, you can. We're using that, but not on the carbon. We use it on the phosphate. Phosphate is more stable. Phosphate is not, has not the changes after a dosing. Usually, you dose a bacteria, sometimes a little bit food. But the depot effect, the organic phosphate, you, d you usually don't dose extra. That means that the difference between the autophosphate and the total phosphate in an ICP test, which you get from Fauna Marine, you can have a factor, and the factor is the same as the heat test you can do at home. And this factor, which is the organic factors, we see how much organic is into the water without need to see the water or without have a, a, a specific test. It's just done, and that why we have so much data about it is that we have it included in the normal standard test kit. So we can also see which elements are missing in these tanks where the organic is high. So that sometimes in a tank it doesn't work properly. But now the most important, like I say, mostly we have to deal with terpenes, sesquiterpenes, humine acids, everything which makes the water brown. So how we get rid of. So we have now several possibilities. And at the end it's quite easy and necessary to do it step by step. Because every method takes a part or a specific part of the organics out, never anything. We cannot use chlorine like in a tap water treatment. So we need to deal with products, with stuff which we can use in an aquarium. The first is the skimmer. The skimmer is able to collect some of the organic compounds and put it out, part of it. The very long molecules, they cannot. They are not strong enough, there's not enough electrification and not enough particleized that the skimmer can take it out. So for that we use ozone generators. But for the aquarium for, with corals, we use only a little bit. We don't want hammer down these long molecules to too small ones. Because then they are food for cyanos and so on. Then they are releasing into the aquarium and high organic creating high precipitations. And they will be binned on carbonates, they will be binned on, on our precipitation, which we create due to the carbonate dosing or due to uh, cold water dosing. And that's what we can release the depot effect which will get the old tank syndrome after a certain time. If the particles are too small, the bacteria can take it and can take them out of the water, but they release it then on the surface. We recommend the ozone about 10 milligrams by 250 gallons. If you smell on your skimmer and you can smell it slightly a little bit, then it's perfect to get rid of the organics. On fish tank, on large public aquariums, we use a little bit higher amount, but the best thing is to do it in a coral tank about this. Very important is at the same time that you use a proper carbon. Not every carbon is, is the same. Very important to get rid of organic compounds of the aquarium is this palletized carbon. This carbon is made to take organic compounds out of the air. That's why it's so perfect for our aquariums. It works slow, but it takes all the long molecules out of the water and make it crystal clear. Together with the ozone, you will have a perfect result and a very cheap result because you can use the carbon for many, many, many weeks and months. It takes slowly, step by step out. If you see the water comes back a little bit yellow, you change the carbon. You don't need a lot of carbon. You need about 30 grams on 250 gallons. So it's very little, but very important to have a slow movement of water through to the filter. Not too much, not tumbling, something like that. That's not good with carbon. It can harm the fishes. So very slowly, also about by 50 gallons an hour through the filter, that's the perfect flow to get rid of the organic compounds. You have the possibility also to work with GFO adsorbers, with aluminum adsorbers, with water change, UV radiation, you can get rid of organic compounds. Which is a little bit a problem always is refugiums, algae filters like that cause algaes release organic compounds into the water. You can see that when they die, but also at the beginning they try to get uh, molecules out. Mostly these algaes are not this type of algae what we use in the refugiums. You, you cannot see them in any reef. So because this is a competitor to the coral grow. That's why in our system we never use ref refugiums. 
If you want to make a, a side aquarium with some algae, let it run, it's okay, but then use ozone and the carbon to get rid of these things. Same as the mucus from the corals, the fighting stuff, the poison, this is what the corals getting out will be taken out by the carbon. So a little bit carbon all the time, every four weeks changing, is a great, great way to keep the aquarium clean. And like I say, you can test it very easily about the heat test and about the standard test with the yellow bucket or by SAK, which you can get in one or two ICPs offer it now. Uh, nowadays you can get it uh, very simple and easy and cheap. Supply system or coral care system like our Balling Light, what we do, takes especially care that all the chemicals and all the nutrients which we make in does not make color bodies, does not make a yellow water. That is from beginning on, it was absolutely clear that we need a crystal clear water because cords need also the light and the light in the right spectra. If the water is yellow, the spectra from the light changes and the cords don't get the right lighting, so they cannot move properly, even if you have a tank which has a higher surface. And you lost a lot of energy till the light comes to the cords if the water is yellow. The reason is also part of it to get rid of the uh, Lars uh, Lazy S Reef Syndrome or of the Old Tank Syndrome is that from beginning on the dosing we try to use chemicals in a way that's why we work over bicarbonates that we have not a lot of precipitations which grab the organic compounds and take them into the bottom and is then the nutrients for later coming algae problems, dinoflagellates, cyanobacteria, and all that yellow water. It's the better way to use a primary care system like Balling Light, where you have the trace elements in relation, where you have a bicarbonate source and a proper calcium source, which is very clean, that you get rid of all the things. This yellow color, what you see in the aquarium, has nothing to do with iron. Iron, if it's those proper, don't color the water because it falls out and it takes on all your surface. That's the reason why some tanks need to dose iron if they're really clean and they have no depot effect. You have several options to test your organic parts in the water without any costs. You can test it over ICP. You can get rid of with all the things you have usually in your home, from starting from the skimmer to absorbers, carbon, UV, ozone, zeolite, a little bit zeolite mixing with the carbon helps you massively. And even the filtration or the remove of the sand which you use and bring in new sand will reduce the amount of organic compound which you have in your aquarium. Corals will be way more healthy. They have not so fast any parasites or bacterial infection cause a low organic compound situation in your tank. It also helps to have a really healthy and a good microbiome. The reason for that is very simple. If the water is full of these molecules, or these long molecules, they cannot smell the right food. If we give food in that's full of carbon, but we have full of dirt, that's like you, sh you turn the shit in the water around. You don't move it like in the sea. In the reef, a wave is coming, new food is coming, everything is good, they can't smell the food. But if we turn the shit around, they cannot smell it. It's like if you're in a city which is full of smog, you cannot smell the nice neighbor who does the great barbecue. So that's why we need a great water. Corals can smell the food, they can grab it, they can get it. The bacteria is on the surface of the corals. They need that shortcut compounds, not a long one. They need the vitamins, they need the sugars, they need all the food in. And at the end, even if you dose the carbon tools, it works way better if you don't have the long one. Then get rid of these organic compounds, do it slowly, not fast, over the time, and do it with a method you have at home, and then control it one or three times you can control it by, by ICP and then you'll be sure you have healthy cores. That's one of our tricks directly from the farm because we are aquarists and not only ICP owners or whatever or producers. This here, 18 years old and that's the tricks we use and as you see at the bucket test we have no color in the water. Bye bye, have a nice Sunday.